This lesson is for section 7.5, right triangle trig. Today we'll use right triangle trig definitions to actually extend our trig functions beyond just our unit circle. Then we're going to use the value of one trig function to find the value of all remaining trig functions. All right, so we're going to begin by reviewing right triangle trig definitions. Now you guys used a mnemonic when you were learning in geometry, uh, a little bit of right triangle trig. So you guys use the mnemonic SOHCAHTOA. Now what that stood for is that the sine of theta, so some angle in an acute, so it's basically an acute angle in a right triangle. Okay, we're looking at some acute angle. Now that the sine of theta is equal to the opposite side. So the opposite side here would be this segment here. It's the ratio of the opposite over your hypotenuse. The cosine is the um, adjacent side over the hypotenuse and the tangent would be the opposite over your adjacent. Now the cosecant of theta would be your hypotenuse over your opposite, which we know is just the um, reciprocal function of sine. All right, now secant of theta is hypotenuse over adjacent, and the cotangent of theta is defined as the adjacent over the opposite. So here we have a picture of two similar right triangles here. I have a 5, 12, 13 triple and a 10, 24, 26 triple. So both of these right triangles are uh, similar to one another. Now if I look at the left triangle here, the sine of theta from theta's viewpoint here would be the opposite 5 over our hypotenuse 13. So I'm just using the right triangle trig definitions that we used above. Now the cosine of theta would be the adjacent 12 over 13, my hypotenuse here. And the tangent of theta would be the opposite 5 over my adjacent 12. Now, when I switch viewpoints here and look at angle beta here, so the other acute angle of this triangle, now the opposite here would be 12. So I have 12 over 13. The adjacent now is 5, so 5 over 13 would be the cosine. And the tangent of beta would be the opposite 12 over my adjacent 5. Okay. Now, coming over to the other triangle here on the right, if I take the sine of theta, that would be the opposite 10 over 26. That's going to simplify to 5 thirteenths. If I look at the cosine of theta, that would be 24 over 26, which will simplify to 12 thirteenths. And the tangent of theta <clears throat> will be the opposite 10 over 24. And that will simplify to 5 twelfths. If I look at the sine of beta, the opposite here is 24 over 26. I end up simplifying here and I get 12 thirteenths. Now for the cosine of beta, I have the adjacent 10 over 26, the hypotenuse there, and I end up with 5 thirteenths. And for the tangent of beta, I have the opposite 24 over 10, which will now simplify to 12 fifths. All right, now the reason why we're looking at these two triangles simultaneously is because I want to get a very important concept across. Our trig functions are defined to be ratios of the side lengths of a triangle. So whether we have a triangle here, a 5, 12, 13, that has been enlarged, right, so that it's double the side length, well, the ratios still remain the same. Our sine of theta matches with the sine of theta over here. These ratios must be the same. Um, so that's a really important concept because it extends our definitions for our unit circle beyond just our unit circle. Okay, so what I mean by that is that now that we know that uh, two similar right triangles have the exact same trig values, well, now I can look at my unit circle here, and before we only defined our trig values um, based off of our unit circle, right? We gave definitions for our, our unit circle. But now we know that if I were to create a similar right triangle here and enlarge this, despite the fact that now my radius is not one in this cir particular circle, ooh, that's some ugly looking circle there, Okay, even though, oh my god, that's beautiful. So even though this circle does not have a radius of 1, our sine, cosine, you know, tangent, and our reciprocal function values will all be the same for this triangle or for the larger one. So this is very powerful because now we're no longer limited to just our unit circle. Okay, now by looking at these uh, trig values here, we're stumbling upon another identity here. Um, if you look at theta and beta here, these are the acute angles of your triangle. We know that theta and beta must add up to 90 degrees because this is a, a right triangle here. And if we look at the sine of theta, the sine of theta is equivalent to the cosine of beta, and the sine of beta is equivalent to the cosine of theta. So this is something that occurs within every right triangle, um, or when you're looking at just acute angles of just acute angles in, in general. So another very important identity here is that the sine of 90 minus theta 
is equal to the cosine of theta, or if you're looking at radians, the sine of pi over two minus theta is equal to the cosine of theta. And vice versa, the cosine of 90 minus theta is equal to sine theta, or the cosine of pi over two radians minus theta is equal to sine of theta. So in words, all that this is saying is that if two angles are supplementary, I'm sorry, complementary, okay? So two acute angles are complementary, then the sine of either one is the cosine of the other. So cosine is literally the shortened phrase for complement sine, okay? So really important idea here. So that means if you were to try to calculate the cosine of 75 degrees, this would be equivalent to the sine of 15 degrees. Or if you were looking at, let's say, um, the cosine of pi over three radians, this would equal the sine of pi over two minus pi over three radians. So what is that? Sine of one sixth pi. Okay, now moving on here, let's do a few example problems. Number one says that given sine of A is equal to four fifths, let's find the cosine of A and the cotangent of A if A is an acute angle. So before, when we were to approach this problem, we would probably have used our identity sine squared of A plus cosine squared A equals one, and then we could plug in this right into here and solve for the cosine of A. But instead, let's use some right triangle trig um, definitions here. Now the sine of A is equal to four over five. Now this is equal, this ratio is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. So let's create a right triangle here and let's use that ratio. So the opposite, let's call A here, the opposite here would be four, the hypotenuse would be five. Now to find the cosine, I'm missing my adjacent side here, right? I'm missing this adjacent side. So I'm gonna use um, Pythagorean theorem here. So four squared plus, let's call that B, I guess. B squared should equal five squared. So 25 minus the 16 will give me nine. So B is gonna equal positive or negative three. However, because we're dealing with a side length, I'm gonna use positive three here. So I have my side, my adjacent side now equaling three. And to find the cosine of A, I need to take the adjacent over the hypotenuse, so that would be three-fifths. The cotangent of A, remember, is the reciprocal function of tangent, so that means I'm taking the, instead of opposite over adjacent, I'll take the adjacent over the opposite. So the adjacent side here is three, the opposite side here is four, so this would give me three-fourths. So now, besides doing our sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, we now have a new method, which would be using right triangles um, and using Pythagorean theorem to solve for our missing um, values for our trig functions. Now, I actually like this method better than just the sine squared plus cosine squared equals one um, using that identity, because I think you're getting a better visual when you're using Pythagorean theorem, and you're also getting better tie into our right triangle trig definitions as well. So it's definitely my recommendation to use this method. I think this one will be easier and more um, practical for you guys. Okay, now moving on to question two here, it says that the cosine of theta equals m. Find all trig functions in terms of m. Assume that theta is an acute angle. All right, now because we're gonna assume that theta is an acute angle, let's create a little right triangle here. Okay, here's theta. Now the cosine of theta is equal to m. Remember cosine is equal to your adjacent over your hypotenuse. So if this is equal to m, that's like m over one. So really I have a right triangle here whose hypotenuse is one, and the adjacent side to theta is m. Now, if I wanna find all of my trig functions, I need to define this opposite side here in terms of m. So I'd find that just by using Pythagorean theorem. So m squared plus, let's call that a b, I guess, again. m squared plus b squared should equal one squared. So if I isolate here that b, and square root, again, I have that whole issue with the positive or negative, but because this is a uh, side length here, I'm gonna uh, call that the positive one minus m squared. I'm sorry, one square root of one minus m squared. So b is equal to, or this side length here, the square root of one minus m squared. Okay, now to define our trig functions, we already have the cosine of theta. The cosecant, or I'm sorry, the secant of theta would be the reciprocal of that function here, so one over m. The sine of theta would equal the opposite, so square root of one minus m squared, over my hypotenuse, which is just one, so I'm gonna erase that. And the cosecant of theta 
would be the reciprocal function here, so 1 over the square root of 1 minus m squared. Now, um, I like to have those rationalized, so let's get rid of that in the denominator. So I'll multiply by the square root of 1 minus m squared over the square root of 1 minus m squared. So in my numerator, I have the square root of 1 minus m squared, and in the denominator, just 1 minus m squared. Finally, the tangent of theta would equal the opposite, so square root of 1 minus m squared all over m, which means that the cotangent oops, of theta is equal to m over the square root of 1 minus m squared. And if I rationalize here, I end up with m times the square root of 1 minus m squared all over square root of 1, oh, I'm sorry. The whole point was to get rid of that, so 1 minus m squared. There we go. Okay, so this is all you're going to do is create a right triangle here and solve using Pythagorean theorem. And then from there, use your SOHCAHTOA uh, to define your, your cosine, sine, tangent values. Okay, last problem here says find all six trig functions if the tangent of theta is equal to negative h over 6 and theta is between 3 halves pi and 2 pi. Okay, now if I were to try to use right triangle trig here, now instead of placing that right triangle here in a positive quadrant, I'm actually going to create a right triangle here because I know that this is supposed to lie between, theta is supposed to lie between uh, 3 halves pi and 2 pi. So here's theta which would also account for the fact that my tangent here is negative h over 6. Now tangent is opposite over my adjacent. So if I'm looking from theta's viewpoint here, I can create this triangle and label my opposite here as h and my adjacent, this side length here, as 6. So the reason I'm doing this is because I can now solve for this hypotenuse using right triangles. I'm sorry, Pythagorean theorem. So I have 6 squared plus h squared would equal my hypotenuse there. So 36 plus h squared, we'll take the square root of that, will equal that hypotenuse. So this segment length is the square root of 36 plus h squared. So now when I look at um, the six you know, trig functions here, so let's go through and, and start them off. The cosine, sine, and we already know the tangent, which means that we can get the cotangent pretty easily here. Right, we'll just take the uh, reciprocal there. Um, but when I look at the cosine, I need to make sure that I'm, I'm looking at the values now. This would be a positive value, right? So 6, um, my adjacent, over my hypotenuse. So square root of 36 plus h squared. But the sine here will be negative. So the sine here is going to be negative, and that will be negative h over my hypotenuse square root of 36 plus h squared. Now I'm not bothering to uh, rationalize these, but uh, I don't know, I'm just being lazy. Okay, now the secant of theta will be the square root of 36 plus h squared over 6, and the cosecant of theta would be negative square root of 36 plus h squared over h. So we just have to be conscious of the fact that um, you know theta is in between um, you know three halves pi and two pi, so that when you're calculating the cosine, sine, and tangent, and you're considering what that would mean in terms of you know its positive or negative value. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson. Um, tomorrow in class, you'll get some practice with this and just using Pythagorean theorem and applying that now our right triangle trig definitions as opposed to just our unit circle definitions. All right, nice job. See you tomorrow.